Hello and welcome to today's webinar on the elementals. So as we begin this webinar, as all webinars, I'd like to invite you to step into the heart space with me. Simply move in our consciousness from here right back down into the heart. And we will do that with three simple breaths. So if you'd like to close your eyes or you can leave them open, I'm just putting my awareness to the heart. And then I'm going to breathe in the energy of the earth, that unconditional healing love energy of the earth. Breathing that right up into the heart. The second breath, connecting the source, soul, creator, God, central sun, however you see and say that. Breathing that energy into the heart. And the third breath, breathing in from both earth and sky into the heart space. Mixing those energies with you. So then you are grounded, connected, and in the heart. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here for the Elementals presentation today. So, and good morning, Randy, and hey, Saad. All right. So, how the Elementals all began was what when my sister Brenda was doing first starting a channel, the elders three, we were having a channeling session. Um, and at the time we really didn't have great places to meet. So we were actually in a, a little tiny cafe at a truck stop just down the road. And there was probably a dozen of us there and we were having a gathering and our friend, Mary. Now, Mary is the one who um, she's been working with us at the studio since the beginning. Um, Mary came to the, the channeling session and she brought a twisted up copper Triskelion. Um, I don't remember where she found this at, but she saw this and we had just started making tensor rings before that. And, um, about a year before that. And so Mary brought this and then during one of the channeling sessions with Brenda and the elders three they pick this up and they start talking about the water elemental hedica the spirit of water and that this was the symbol for that spirit of water so there was quite a bit that they channeled through that day and it was super exciting um i started making them right away of course because i was already making the tensor rings and as we were making these hedicas this blew me away because it was the first time that I started to really be able to feel energy was with the Hedica. It opened me up completely to be able to feel. Um, it was really amazing. So I was very excited about the Hedicas, the Triskelions. So I was making these by the tens, the hundreds, and in the thousands and just giving these away. I mean, I would give these everywhere I go. Still to this day, I run into people all the time who are like, oh, I still have that Hedica that you gave me years ago. Um, and, and they've been affecting people's lives. Now, as we were going out um, around the country for the first year that I was making and giving out the Hedicas um, and just sharing this information is uh, we were running into people who, who had remembrances of this symbol. Um, there were people that had been drawing this since they were kids and some people even had it tattooed on their body. Um, other people told us about fishermen on the East coast who had been making these and they throw them in their holding tanks to keep the fish alive longer. And several people were having remembrances of this being connected to Atlantis before they even knew it was a water elemental. And that's an amazing thing too, is so many people would see this, pick it up, feel it and they knew it was water they knew it had to do with water and um and so the, the a lot of people were having remembrances of the atlantean times where this is was on the healing walls great big in atlantis um, a lot of people remembrance with healing so with the hedica and again please do check out the website and follow all the links around to hedica because there's a lot of channeled information out there that Brenda brought through on Hedica, the water elemental. Now it's interesting because when 
The Gals That Dances With Water wrote the first edition of the book as soon as it came out, um, I believe in 2012, they, uh, they had gotten a hold of us. And a lot of you know the story of Dances With Water and, and Slim Spurling and that whole connection. But this was the very first connection I had with um, The Gals That Dances With Water. And they call us up and said, well, you know, what you call the Hedica, we call the Triskelion. And your channeled information is right in alignment with the science on what it shows it does with water. Um, so what we were seeing that it was doing with water was that it was um, bringing in that spiritual connection with water. And as it did, it shifted water. It restructured it. Um, it balanced the pH. It made the spin rate in the water spin faster. Um, and with all of that, you know, all the heavy minerals and things drop out of the water. So in the beginning, we were telling people to put these in your toilet tanks and things like that to help with the scaling and everything with people that have hard water because it would help for the minerals, the harder, heavier substances as it's being restructured to more settle out and not be clumped together and sticking. And so it was working on the physical of the water. We also saw that the Hedica, and this was one of the big things, is that we saw that when you put it into soil, that it extends out about 15 feet in every direction and it increases root growth. Now that's why when we first started working with um, the Hedica and the tensor rings, when we first started to sell these, we had a website called the Energy Garden. Um, and that's why it is because we were, I, I personally felt that one of the hugest applications was with agriculture and the soil. Um, and so the Energy Garden was, was our first, first website. Um, it's no longer even anywhere in, in the web space anywhere. It's completely gone now. But um, so Hedica, the water elemental, changed a lot of people's lives along the way. Um, then Brenda started channel in the other earth elementals. Now, some of the other earth elementals, Kaleem, and Kaleem is the, this is the symbol of the spirit of air. Kaleem is the air. And then there was Chasel, fire. Plymella, wind, and ether. And it's pretty elusive. Ether says, I have no name, I am everything. Um, it's a phenomenal symbol. If you figure out how to connect with ether and work with it, I think you will be a powerful creator of physical reality. Ether, I am everything. Now, the thing about Plymella, the wind, so we were like, how come there's an elemental of air and an elemental of wind? So what we felt along the way and what we worked with is that there's air, which is an elemental, obviously. And then wind, we see it as our Kaleem, or sorry, Plymella, we see is not necessarily just having to deal with wind with the air elemental. We're seeing that Plymella is an energy mover. So Plymella is an energy mover of all the elementals, not just air. It is also an energy mover of fire, of ether, of water. So the Plymella goes well with any of the elementals. So the biggest question is, how do I use my elementals? Well, it is a one, it brings through a spiritual connection, a remembrance, the spirit of water. So you don't need the symbols, the specific copper tools to have that connection, to bring through those elementals or to connect with those elementals. Sorry. They are a spirit. They are, um, as Hedica would say, it is older than the earth. So it's different from a lot of other cultures and belief systems about the different elementals. And, um, you know, and some would say the earth is an elemental. Well, no, the earth is in, in our perception and what we understand 
from working with the elementals and working with Gaia, uh, Earth, is that Gaia is separate. She is her own being, as is Hedica. But um, the Earth elementals were seeing that water and the other elementals existed before the Earth, that they came here in assistance. So there are other planets within our solar system that also use, that are also Hedica is a part of, as well as the other elementals. There are also other planets that we've seen that do not have the same elementals. They have a different set of elementals. One of these actually came from a 12 year old girl who she can move clouds. She's just a phenomenal being. And this was several years ago. I think she's probably in her twenties now, but, um, she was drawing pictures uh, for my sister Brenda of the elementals on the other planet that she has awareness of. Um, and so they were different elementals. They, they weren't the water, fire, air, all of that. So the water elemental Hedica, as it comes to earth and it assists and how we use this. Now we can use this as a physical tool and we can place it underneath of our water. So you can place this underneath of your water bottle and it will restructure the water. It will bring a higher spin rate to the water molecule, balancing pH. Um, and so Dances with Water will talk to you about the, the scientific side of working with this particular tool. For us, it is about connecting with the spiritual aspect of water, Hedica, the water elemental. And so when you work with this again you can work with it as a physical tool we do not place suggest placing it in the water because we can get too much copper when we put it directly within the water so we always place it outside of the water now um and of course plastic isn't your best container to use obviously um glass is one of the best ones that like dances with water says but no matter what you can use this with your water um so using it with your water to charge your water and again, you can put this into uh, work with agriculture. You can put it into potted plants. You can put it out into the garden, uh, put it out every 15 feet. Um, you can also use this for, a lot of people use it for healing work. Um, they just carry, they just put it on their person where they need it. Um, you know, we have one sitting everywhere where there's water at by the sink. Um, underneath of our Berkey water filters with the rings. Uh, we have them sitting on top of the hot water heater. Um, and I actually have one of the original uh, money clips. I'm actually going to start making these, you guys. Uh, so look for these. This is one of the original ones that I made like 10 years ago, um, nine years ago. This is basically a Hedica. That is my money clip. This thing has been everywhere. I've lost money before, but I've never lost my Hedica money clip. Um, the other things <clears throat> that we're making with the Hedicas are obviously the Hedica coasters. Um, for a while, we were making the little elemental pendants, which we will revive those again here in 2020. Um, and besides the Hedica water coasters uh, that have evolved through the years, um, we're also Mary is the one who makes all the Hedica finger rings for us. Um, and I was seeing if I had a Hedica finger ring here in my drawer, which I don't, but you can see those online as well. Right now we're currently making them with copper and with silver. Um, so Hedica has been one of the most versatile of the elementals to me and to most people, it is the most well known. So then, um, and if you guys have questions, please do post your questions up here. But anyway, uses of Hedica, um, There, don't limit the use of Hedica. One thing about Hedica, though, is it really doesn't like the electricity. You know, a lot of people are using it on to make organite for smart meters, tower busters, things like that. Um, you know, electric and water. I don't know, but um, Plymella. So, how do you use Plymella? Plymella again is an energy mover. You can use it on the body physical tool. You can use the physical plymella on the body um, to move energy. Kaleem. 
good question how to use this. This is one that usually I'll just hang up along with a plimella, a plimella and a colleen together, and I'll just hang those up. And um, basically, when my attention goes there, and that is one of the biggest things about working with the elementals, is we're going to be working with the elemental spirits more than anything. Again, these are just a tool for our awareness, a tool of our attention. So I'll hang these up anywhere in, this, in my space, and whenever I see them, I just think of them cleaning, clearing the air. And so also you can do that work with connecting with the elementals, going into the sacred space of the heart. You can connect with the elementals, like with wind and with air and with fire. And you can ask them to do clearing work, healing work. That is part of what they do, not only for the environment, but for ourselves, for the physical, for the body. Chasel. Now, Chiselle is one that fire. Oh, my goodness. So when I first started teaching Merkaba classes, um, you know, and I had great big star tetrahedrons people would stand in, I actually, I was wearing a Chiselle in class a, as, a, as a pendant, and I just put it on that day. And um, I was at class, and... I got such high anxiety. I had to leave somebody standing in the, in the uh, star tetrahedron and I had to walk, I had to walk out and I called my sister. I was like, what's going on? And it was very early in the journey. And basically the chasel was bringing up the stuff to clear. It was surfacing. Um, so chasel, chasel is the fire. Uh, again, the burning, the bringing everything up. Now I, could go through and read the channeled information on each one of these elementals, but I'm going to leave that to you. Um, if you resonate with one of these guys and you want to find out more about it, um, obviously the Hedica has the most channeled information on it, where the other elementals have about a page worth of information that's been channeled. And it'll talk about Chiselle and setting the fire and the soul's fire and all that great stuff. So Chiselle has been also one of my favorites. Um, and one of these days, like I say, in 2020, we will have the elemental pendants going. Um, they'll have a Shungite backing and um, a regeneration ring around them. They're going to be phenomenal. So keep your eyes out for those. So Chiselle, working with it, you can work with it on the body. Again, you can hang it in your environment. That's what we do with a lot of these elementals is um, just hang them up like wind chimes. They just hang in your space or they can sit on your altar. So a lot of people who order the elemental set, it sits on their altar. Um, a lot of people just carry them in their pockets. So again, it is simply just a reminder for that connection to that spirit, that elemental of fire, earth, or fire, air, wind, water, ether. Again, Earth is its own being. Um, then ether. Still don't know. Ether is an elusive one. Again, I am ether. I am everything. I have no name. So, very interesting. Love to hear people's feedback on what goes on with the ether. All right. So, that is a about all the information that I have, like I say, um, there's still more information on the website under the elementals. Um, you can read the paragraph or the page that's for each one of those elementals that gives you the description, the channel information. Um, again, keep your eye out for the elemental pendants coming at one point in time. But otherwise, um, just kind of show you a comparison again here of the elementals. Um, this element, the, the Hedica, is actually cut to a sacred measure. It is cut to the golden fire measure, even though it really does not need to be. The others are, um, actually, Mary is making all the other elementals. I'm making the Hedicas because they are a lot heavier gauge. They are tough to make. And, and I don't feel right about making them in a lighter gauge. Everybody who's received one of these free ones over the years, they were always made out of this lighter 10 gauge 
where the Hedicas are made out of this heavier eight gauge, I just feel better about them in this heavy gauge for, for us to distribute. Um, so again, um, there's just kind of a, a size comparison, a gauge comparison, and the size comparison. They're all comparable in sizes. Um, and again, the Hedica is definitely one of my favorites, but again, size comparisons. So Rose is asking, how does the fire elemental differ from the regeneration when it comes to bringing things up to release? So that's really a good question about um, the release work with the Chiselle. So the Chiselle is going to be doing things like in the physical. It's going to be um, like, let's say you're carrying a stuck emotion right here. It's going to bring it up to the surface. That's where it caused me the anxiety. So now then what what we had said, and I believe it might be in that channel information, but thank you for asking this, Rosa. So basically, when the Chiselle brings up the stuff, you take the Hedica, you wash it away. You have to find the way to release it, to transform it, to clear it, because the Chiselle is simply going to bring it to the surface. It's going to ignite that fire. It's going to boil everything to the surface, but then it's not doing the transmutation of it. And it's not going back through, um, you know, all time, space, dimensions, incarnations. It is working for us right here, right now. Um, so it can work very well in conjunction, um, you know, and the elementals, we've actually taken the elementals and we have put that um, properties, frequencies, and consciousness comes through the golden fire rings. So if you have a golden fire ring or a harmony ring, you can connect with the earth elementals through those rings um, and any of the water rings that you might have too. So the, the harmony and the golden fire though, that is part of their etheric templates is that all the elementals are present within there. So that's why we talk about using a, a water ring or any of the tensor rings in order to better speak with your water when you're using it because it does have that frequencies and properties of Hedica, the water elemental, is available within those rings. Um, question, can I combine the golden fire with regeneration? Yes, please do combine the golden fire and the regeneration rings together. Those are two phenomenal rings together. So the regeneration rings, the reason that we are going to use the regeneration rings with the elemental pendants that we are creating is that we've seen that with the regeneration rings, just like it works with the human and connecting to those higher aspects of us, bringing in all those higher lights, bringing in all that higher connection, that that is doing that with the water as well as the symbol, as well as well as like Hedica, the symbol of the water elemental. You put the regeneration ring around there, which is what our newest water coaster is, is the regeneration ring. It is bringing in the higher aspects of water. So just working with the regeneration ring field and water itself, it is bringing in that higher connection, that blueprint of water before it came to earth, when it was Hedica, before it came here in support of earth and the humans. Um, so working with both the golden fire and the regeneration ring. So the golden fire is clearing water, actual water of its cell memory of all the stuff that it has taken on since it's been here on this planet. Then you add the regeneration ring to it and it is taking it higher, bringing in those higher blueprints. So that's working with each and every one of the elementals. So yes, working with your tensor rings and the elementals. It is a powerful thing to do. Um, it's it's a great thing to combine them. So a lot of people who will buy the elemental set, they place it on their altar. They'll also put a larger tensor ring around it just to amplify everything out. So um, let's see. And then Rosa asks, will we be making a tool with golden fire and regeneration? Um, Yes, actually, the gateway pendant is one, as well as all the new silver tools, um, golden fire regeneration, golden fire regeneration, and the infinite light pendant is also the two, um, as well as the gateway pendant. 
And so once we make the elemental, um, when we make the elemental pendants, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure we're going to be using regeneration. Um, and we're going to try to mix gold and fire in with there as well. Because uh, those two together are phenomenal. Then we add the elementals and it's just really an amazing way to work with the elementals is with uh, the tensor rings. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, um, please do go to the website there on the product page and read more about the elementals. Um, it, it's, it's super, super amazing stuff. Um, and we'll make sure that we have all the links to the Hedica Elemental because there was a lot of channeled information that came from Hedica. So, um, and then we also have a video. Um, just one more quick thing. We have a video on YouTube on how to make the Hedica, the Triskelion. You don't have to make this out of copper. You can make it out of pipe cleaners or whatever you wish. And it doesn't have to be a sacred measurement. Um, and I want to make that clear is that the sacred measurements that we use, you, you do not have to make the elementals and the sacred measurements. When we make an elemental, basically we are just simply creating the, the space, the anchor, the field in this physical for that elemental to come in. It's putting our attention and our awareness there. But the sacred measurements, of course, that does bring another extra level and layer to it. But you certainly don't have to use sacred measurements when you make a Hedica. And so there is that video that walks you through making these. Um, Dances with Water also has um, on their website and in their book, they also talk about making the Triscale. Um, and so when you make this, you can make it, like I say, out of pipe cleaners. You can draw it. You can buy one of these. You can stamp it onto things. It doesn't matter. We actually have, let's see if I have one right here. We made these what these stickers years ago, and I only have like a couple left, so we don't have any for sale or anything. But these were vinyl stickers. Has the elders3.com on it, has the Hedica. Now, when you put this on a water bottle, it energizes the water, especially when your attention is there. So this has energetics to it on its own because it is anchoring in that that energy of Hedica. So and yes, we will try to get some more of these guys made at some point in time because they are phenomenal little stickers for your water bottle. Um, one more quick thing that comes up is what makes this different, the, the Triscalian, than a Triscale? So the Triscale that you would see in the Celtic traditions is it has three legs and a center spiral. The Hedica has two legs and the one center spiral. So, and it's interesting how the Elders Three talk about it is that it's kind of like earth, sky, how they meet and come into you. Um, so anyway, the Hedica is different from the truss scale that has three legs that all meet into a center point. So anyway, I guess if we have no more questions, then um, can we use the elementals to create how? Yeah. Um, so you mean, so the question was, can we use the elementals to create? So basically, that's kind of what we're seeing with ether. Is I feel that ether is going to be one of those that when we begin to manifest, when we begin to materialize things into the physical world, you know, like the masters did, which is where we are going. We are bringing our consciousness more into this physical reality. Physical reality is raising frequency and vibration. Someday, I totally believe this, just like the Indian masters used to, is that we can create through consciousness and physical reality. I believe ether will be a part of that. But can we use the elementals to create basically on the physical? So we have had experiences where um, we're having a gathering outside and it's so windy, we ask Plymella if it can help to move that wind around us. Whenever I'm trying to light a fire or my stove or something, my pilot light, I'm always asking for ether to come in to assist. So working with that spirit of the element um, 
is, is really a phenomenal thing, especially when you start connecting with them. Um, they can do amazing, amazing work, not only in the environment, but for healing. And that's really the reason that, you know, the Elders 3 talked about our awareness coming to these elementals right now, again, is that they are great for the clearing and the healing um, of ourselves and the earth. And again, earth, we don't ever see it as being in trouble and needing healing. It's basically that we need to do the healing of the earth for ourselves to step into our power that she is just fine. Um, but the more we connect and the more that we can heal um, in our perspectives, our realities, ourselves, um, the more we heal the earth and those around us. All right. Much love, you guys. See you next time.